I Wonder What's In It by Harvey Washington Wiley We sit at a table, delightfully spread, and daintily finger the cream-tinted bread, a film of the butter so yellow and sweet, well suited to make every minute, a dream of delight, and yet while we eat, we cannot help but asking what's in it. The pepper perhaps contains coconut shells, and the mustard is cottonseed meal, and the coffee in sooth of baked chicory shells, and the terrapin tastes like roast veal. The wine which you drink never heard of a grape, but of tannin and coal tar is made, and you could not be certain except for their shape that the eggs by a chicken were laid. The banquet how fine, don't begin it, till you think of the past and the future and sigh. How I wonder, I wonder what's in it. During the early 1900s in Chicago meatpacking plants, rats and their feces, poisoned bread, unsanitary meat, and water that workers would wash their hands in all went into the sausage. Before the Pure Food and Drug Act of 1906, there was no national law that regulated food safety. In fact, more soldiers died in the Spanish-American War from bad meat than in battle. The Pure Food and Drug Act protected consumers from adulterated and possibly unsafe food. Many dangerous preservatives were used, for example, Milk would be preserved with formaldehyde, which is deadly. Many filler substances were used. Again, milk is a great example of this. A 2 to 1 ratio of milk to water was common in cities. The cream was skimmed off. Chalk or plaster would be added for a whiter look. For a more golden look, molasses was added. And to top it off, pulverized calf brains were put in to mimic the layer of cream on top. Pleasant, right? Food was adulterated more often as people moved to big cities and away from small rural towns because without personal relationships, grocers had less incentive to sell honest and unadulterated foods to their customers. Harvey Washington Wiley was a physician turned chemist. He taught at Purdue in 1874 and was later appointed chief chemist of the Department of Agriculture in 1883. Harvey Washington Wiley improved the safety and legitimacy in the food industry when he broke through barriers of ignorance and disinterest by informing the public, barriers of mistrust by pushing for pure food legislation, and barriers of corrupt businesses by enforcing the law. Wiley raised public awareness that the food that people were eating was not safe. For example, when Wiley was sent to Chicago by his boss, who was tired of Wiley's stubborn stance against cutting funds of his department, he held multiple presentations publicizing adulterated food products and what his department did. In Wiley's autobiography, he says this about working for Good Housekeeping magazine after he retired from the Department of Agriculture. I had no longer to restrict myself on account of official propriety. What I thought would be good for the people at large, I was at liberty to express in my own way. I was doing the same kind of work, but doing it more freely and pleasantly than ever. This shows how Wiley loved informing the public. Another way Wiley informed the public about the dangerous situation of American food was through the Department of Chemistry bulletins. Wiley wrote well over 70 bulletins. They covered topics ranging from colorings to adulterations of alcohol. Wiley also educated the public through articles in newspapers like a sales champion of benzoic acid, cold storage meat good three months, and Wiley's foes think they've beaten him. Wiley cared a lot about this and was a persuasive person. Dr. Wiley even said this, I regret that I have no time to expound all the reasons which lead me to believe that the addition of a substance to food which is not food, which takes no part in nutrition, need not be proved absolutely harmful before it can be excluded under the law. Wiley loved sharing his knowledge and wanted to protect people. Wiley pushed for pure food legislation so people could trust the food that they consumed. Wiley proved that a law was necessary with his experiments that newspapers nicknamed the Poison Squad, where young men were fed preservatives such as borax, sodium sulfate, and formaldehyde in order to measure the effects. In fact, they could not finish the sodium sulfate experiment and only 3 out of the 12 finished the sodium benzenate experiment. In the 27 years prior to 1906, there had been over 200 proposals for pure food legislation. For 23 of those years, Wiley was the chief chemist of the Department of Agriculture. Wiley got others involved in the fight for pure food, 
In fact, a million women sent letters to the White House in support of a Pure Food and Drug Act. The Pure Food and Drug Act mandated correct labeling of products, especially with harmful or addictive substances like cocaine toothache drops. It also banned filler ingredients like chalk or sawdust and flour. Lastly, it prevented harmful preservatives like formaldehyde from being used. A New York Times article titled Getting Results in the Fight for Pure Food, dated May 10, 1908, states that adulteration of food products had almost gone out of existence. No profit in adulteration is the explanation. We see that the law worked, at least somewhat. Wiley not only raised public attention and pushed for legislation, he also ensured that laws were enforced. In order to enforce the law, he had to break the barrier of corrupt businesses. This was not easy though. The Pure Food and Drug Act was intentionally written so that enforcement was near impossible because no toxins were specifically named and opponents also limited the enforcement budget to just $700,000 in the first year. Wiley put it like this, the interest opposed to it are likely to have all the money needed. Wiley said this in his autobiography. The law placed its enforcement in the hands of the Bureau of Chemistry, and as its chief, I had the tremendous responsibility of determining what products were violating the law and why. In fact, Wiley said this, The Pure Food Act is of the highest importance to enforce and respect. Wiley enforced the Pure Food and Drug Act by taking big businesses to court, like hiding sugar, for selling saccharin as sugar. In fact, in less than two years after the passage of the Pure Food and Drug Act, there was over 83 criminal prosecutions against corrupt businesses. Wiley broke the barrier of mistrust and unsafe food in the U.S. by letting the people know about the problem, fighting for legislation, and enforcing the laws. Harvey Washington Wiley crusaded for the Pure Food and Drug Act that protected the people over greedy businesses. Though we may have safe food today, there still are big businesses pushing against legislation that hurts them. We should put people before corporations like he did. Harvey Washington Wiley cared about the truth more than money. Like Wiley, we need leaders who look for facts and not just at what will give them the most money. He is an example in our world today of breaking barriers for the people and in remembering him, we should follow his example. As he said in his poem, we should think of the past and future to make decisions.